successful just because we've had those issues before. And then can you make sure that when you look at me as a participant that I have the recording feature next to my name? It says recording up there. All right, great, we got I, it. I, just oh, to put my two cents in, hi everybody. I've had more success with recording to the cloud. Have you really? <laughs> um, well, for this, for this, we're gonna record to the computer because I don't want to touch it and mess anything up. But right. I will experiment when I'm not on the hot seat. <laughs> right, right. Okay. Gotcha. All right, I'll mute myself now. <laughs> All right. Um, wow, so uh, we, we got a decent amount of people in the room um, amongst all the people that are listening to this at, at, at a later time. But um, so first of all, um, I do want to say that the image that Janice created <laughs> for this uh, talk was absolutely unreal. Um, that was a gem, and I think we may have to keep that. Um, that may just be it because that's unbelievable. What, yeah, what, but what uh, I joined. Was that exactly that's the only reason I joined? I saw that image and I said, I "Wait, got it. so Caden last night, Caden goes, Daddy, you're on a mountain with the president, right? That, that's what he, that's what he asked me last night." So I go, I am Caden. We'll go see that one day. That's what I told him. So from now until we see it, he'll believe that I'm on that mountain, <laughs> which will be the, great. The uh, thing that was really, the thing that was really funny about that, you guys sent me your pictures, and then I pulled a picture up, and I had my husband is really good with Photoshop, so he was helping me do it. And he's like, no, we need a close-up picture of you. So then he took a new picture of me, which was absolutely atrocious. And that's the one we ended up using. But my kids were like, that's Matt. He kind of looks like Abraham Lincoln. So we were like, all right, Matt's going where Abe goes. <laughs> we're popping that in there. That's too funny. Yeah, it was, um, it was awesome. I really, really do like it. Um, so, wow, we got even more people hopping on. So everyone knows what, um, what happened last week is um, I was talking on my weekly personal call with Adrian. And um, we just realized that there's a lot of things that people assume right now about nutrition and about dieting and this whole space. And people really don't understand the right application of certain dietary strategies. And there's so many. And I think a lot of today, when you hear us answer some or have some conversation, you're going to hear, well, it depends, right? Because you guys would agree that it does depend on certain situational things. So how I think I'd start this off is I think we need to clarify what intermittent fasting is, what the different protocols out there to, that exist, and actually what it's proposed to do to your body and your health. Um, you know, and, and I'll just start this conversation off by, by um, talking about some protocols that I know are out there. And most of my knowledge from intermittent fasting um, comes from self-experimentation. Um, it also comes from listening to a lot of what Dr. John Berardi said, who's one of the founders of Precision Nutrition. And I listened to a lot of what he said. And as far as the protocols that are out there, and, and I'll let Adrienne, um, you know, piggyback off this if she knows any others. But from what I understand, there's a couple different methods to do this. There's a one-day, 24-hour fast where it's once a week and you eat normally, you know, let's just say Monday through Saturday, and you do one 24 hour fast. Another common type is doing an alternate day fast. So you alternate days of some feeding with some non-feeding. And then there's another one that are these um, windows, okay, which is the most popular, I think. And a lot of us probably employ it without even realizing it. Those are the 16 hour fast and about eight hour windows of eating. And I think that is common um, amongst a lot of people. As far as protocols, those are the only three that I'm aware of. And what I also understand is the only one, and I guess maybe that we'll talk about this after we talk about the benefits, the only one where scientific research has been done a lot to announce the benefits are on the specific protocol designed as eat one day, fast one day, eat one day, fast one day. A lot of the other stuff that I'm reading is coming from a lot of anecdotal stuff, which is great. It's also valuable information when you get it that way. But when people promote the, some of the benefits, which is like cell regeneration, weight loss, 
circadian rhythm resets. Like these are things I'm hearing that are good about intermittent fasting, growth hormone release, um, uh, resensitizing your body to actual feelings of hunger and actual hunger. These are all benefits, right? Now, when we talk about benefits, me, I like to go back to what the literature says. And from the stuff that, that I was kind of finding, it was data was taken after periods of eating, fasting, eating, fasting on an alternate period. A lot of the anecdotal stuff, or what I like to call bro science, right? Because I'm a big fan of bro science, was coming from the point, the style of 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating, 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating. And, and that comes from a combination of sleep and skipping some meals. So as far as that, uh, I'm going to go to Adrian. Adrian, do you have anything to add to what is intermittent fasting? What is it supposed to do to the body? And the different type of formats that you've had experience with or you've heard about? You're on mute, though, so don't talk any of those gems yet. You're on mute. <laughs> <laughs> On mute. Okay, am I muted? You're good. You're good. Okay, so intermittent fasting is just periods between non-eating and eating, right? Rest and digest. So the 24-hour fast was really popularized by a guy named Brad Pilon, who did his PhD, um, and he did the. It was from a book called Eat Stop Eat, and there's tons of tons of literature in there, and basically, eating versus non-eating, and he had some some protocols where you could get away with zero-calorie liquids. So for that 24 hour fast, you could have water, um, you know, coffee, tea, even some, you know, zero calorie beverages such as sodas, even if they're diet and still have the benefits of it. Um, then there was, I've heard of fast five, which is having a five hour eating window. And we're trying to just get as much nutrient as all in all, the big encompassing thing is between eating and not eating and the proposed benefits like you said, the only thing that I've seen in my coaching experience while using it has been reintroducing the client to understand what hunger pangs really are versus, versus dehydration. To understand what, what, what food pangs are versus uh, dehydration or anything like that, if that makes sense. And then the other big one is that the warrior diet, which is one meal a day which is a form of intermittent fast, which you're only eating once a day at the end of the day. Again, all of these break into periods of eating versus non-eating. I've seen it helpful with people. And the 16-8 was popularized by a guy at leangains.com. He put a huge thing on all of that stuff. Um, but there's been actually no research that has supported the 16-hour window. At least that I've seen so far, there's no difference between stopping at 14 hours to 18 hours, at least with women. There's been like, so if you eat 14 hours versus 18, there's literally no proposed difference of benefits. Um, so long and short, I think it's great for people that need hard stops with timelines, meaning they work best on time likes. A lot of people I coach work really well off don't eat past eight. Or if they give them absolute parameters of when they can and cannot eat, they work well with hard defined lines. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's at, at least intermittent fasting to me is, is a small tactic in the overall strategy of nutrition. It works wonders for some people. I've done variations of it. Um, again, I think it really helps if you have issues where you're just eating a lot all, all day. If you're just a constant grazer, which I am, I love to just eat all day long. Like that's, I don't do three meals a day. Like so if I want to just start to clean up my diet, I start to compress just when I'm eating. Mm -hmm. And I think, does that make sense? Yeah. So with a lot of people, I think it, it's a tactic that you can use with certain people to help them control appetite and cravings. I think over time it does help. But a lot of the stuff where you're talking about like cellular regeneration, there has been some studies in that. But again, the cohort is so small. And it's not that they're not meta analysis. And if it's not a meta analysis, which is a massive group of people doing over a long period of time, it's really hard for me to kind of bite into that, you know, but it's definitely a useful tactic when we're talking about strategies. Yeah. And as far as the research that's out that promote that, um, um, and I think the proper term is like autofactosis for cell regeneration. Yeah. And the only studies that are reporting that are studies that were 
alternating days of fasting and, and, and eating. And, and in addition, in addition, um, these people weren't taking part in high intensity activity. Mm -hmm. there, there, it wasn't exactly. an activity study. So to this day, there does not, there does not exist a research, medically peer-reviewed research study to tell us about people exercising or taking part in high-intensity activity because that's all the craze mm -hmm. and, it, and fasting. We know nothing. We know nothing. Right. For all, for, that's what I'm saying. For our cohort, the people that we're dealing with between, you know, mostly 18 to 55 healthy individuals doing three to four days of strenuous exercise layering in intermittent fasting is it's a stress it's another stressor to the body yeah. so it might not be the wisest i've never had i've never coached a crrossfit athlete on it I, it at their level most of the crrossfit athletes i work with are are very high level athletes competing yeah. closer to the games regionals it's not working yeah. you don't do it. it's yeah. another stressor on their body uh for gen pop someone really struggling it could do it could do wonders so you have to really look at the cohort of that study and then apply it. Hey, is this appropriate mm -hmm. for the people I'm working with? Mm -hmm. Most, most of these studies are done with unhealthy individuals, 55 and up, mm -hmm. or they're pulled from the college resource from 18 to 22, but they're not doing activity. Exactly. So, I mean, it's real, really tough to then apply that to the people that we're coaching and seeing yeah. every day. Oh, yeah. totally. Janice, have you ever done intermittent fasting on yourself? Yes. You done? Um, well, I did intermittent fasting um, back in 2017, 18. Um, well, I consciously did intermittent fasting back in 2000 slash 18 um, when I was cutting. Um, previously, due to my work schedule, I had done intermittent fasting. Um, because I worked really long hours over the weekend, nighttime. Um, so naturally, I kind of did that. I was eating at 10 o'clock at night. So the next day I would go into work. I wasn't eating until a little bit later. Um, so I would say for me, it, it kind of kept me, I was never really hungry in the morning because I was eating later at night. Now, when I was cutting, when I was very much deep into my cut, um, when I kind of understood you know, calories in versus calories out. And when I was able to play with um, cycling my calories, carb cycling and doing all those things a little bit more the way you would describe the lean gains, um, you know, the lean gains program in the 16 and eight, he kind of sets it up as I think it's Burkan, kind of sets it up where you start cycling your calories, you cycle your carbs. So it was very beneficial for me um, while I was cutting one day a week. It was mm. not something that I did um, throughout my whole training program. So Sunday was typically my rest day. I worked late hours on Saturday. Um, so I would eat at 10 o'clock at night on Saturday while I was at work. And then the next day I would cut my calories down a little bit, pulled my carbs completely down, increased my fat, kept my protein the same, but I would eat in a very, very small window with a reduction in my calories. And then what I would do is add my, um, add some calories into my training days, add my carbs into those days. So um, it was very beneficial to me. As you guys both said, I agree 100% that it is a tool that people can use in order to um, maybe reach their goals. But my recommendation, I, the problem I have with intermittent fasting, I would say first, I think that it is a craze. I think that doctors and physicians prescribe it the way they prescribe um, different types of uh, diets. You know, if you're a pre diabetic, um, they said there can be benefits to intermittent fasting because it helps with some um, controlling your insulin levels. But my big problem, I think it is, you need to lose weight here. Don't eat between this time and then go with it without having a, um, the person really having a real understanding of the nutrients that they're taking in um, mm -hmm. and overall, like their overall health and well-being. So if I were to look at that, like as a pyramid, we talk about all of our base things of what's important. Uh, like overall calories, understanding, you know, um, maybe some healthy, healthy food, eating food mainly from the ground, uh, not processed things, sleep, all of those things. I would stack that like in a pyramid, like five up as just like a tool. That would be yeah. after someone's completely honed in. They understand, um, first of all, they have a healthy relationship with food. 
no prior, um, you know, issues with any kind of eating disorders, um, that binging and purging or the binging type of, of habits, I would feel comfortable as a coach working with a client very deep in and after a huge intake um, of behaviors and how they are like with food. If that kind of wraps up my experience and kind of what I feel about yeah, intermittent fasting. It, it, it does. And, and you brought up some good points there. By the way, your hair looks amazing. I just want to let you know that. Hey, three, two days a week, I actually shower yeah. and put my hair down from the bun I wear, <laughs> you know, for. Your hair does look great. Um, Thanks, guys. But <laughs> as you went Thanks, over guys. that, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking about um, the last 12 nutritional clients I've worked with in the last two months, okay? And I'm thinking about, would I ever advise any of those individuals that I work with right now to do intermittent fasting? And here's what I'm going to say. My answer is absolutely no for this reason. The, the folks, 95% of the folks I've dealt with over the last two months have all, be, have all been eating well below their basal metabolic rate. What that tells me is they've probably spent years calorically restricting their diet and in, mm -hmm. and, and high intensity activity. So for me, I'm not even talking about it until they become adequate. Number one, that maybe that's through a reverse diet, right? We need, like you said, we need to get them foundational, have a healthy relationship with food before we ever would employ intermittent fasting. And, and, and you know what, this has come from someone that used to employ intermittent fasting no matter who the individual was on rest days. I used to do that all the time. I used to say, here's a way, because we're gonna decrease your calories a little bit on rest days, and we're gonna do a little bit of intermittent fasting one day a week. I used to do that, and I used to preach it, and I used to do it myself. But now what I'm realizing is, there's two people that are coming to us right now, and I'm sure Adrian can, can, can totally uh, relate to this. We either have people that are severely underfed for a long period of time and intermittent fasting would not be appropriate for them. Number two, I have the person that comes to me that's, and you guys probably do too, five days good, two days out of the weekend, binge shit show, right, with food. Mm -hmm. If we employ intermittent fasting for those people, guess what their binging becomes? Even worse, even yeah. worse right? Because we, we, we sold them on the idea of intermittent fasting where they have some preconceived notion of it, but it doesn't fit the individual. So what we're creating is they're binging for one reason, because they're restricting so much during the week that they can't wait to go ape shit. And mm -hmm. it's not even healthy ape shit. It's goddamn debilitating ape shit, where it's just fucking everyone's like results. It really is. So when people are like, say, I'm doing intermittent fasting, I'm like, why? Why? You have to let me know what, what your behavior is. And we're finding that out on those questionnaires on, the, on the, um, the people we're working with. And it's like, guys, we need to learn how to get fed first. And then yeah, yeah. we can yeah. work on some intermittent fasting. You know, I believe it has its place. But specifically for me, the people that I'm working with, there was only one person out of the 12 I worked with over two months that intermittent fasting might be a good, a good way to go. Good way to go. Just one person. That's it. I don't know if you experience the same kind of people coming into you, Adrian, and how you're employing intermittent fasting with your clients. Like, are they just telling you they want to do it and you'll work around the style that they want to no. eat? Or are you actually looking at who is this person? No, kind of like what, um, I'm going to use a whiteboard if you don't mind. Can you see this? I Can love that, that whiteboard. Yes. Okay. So what, what, what Janice was saying is, is very, very similar to how I use it. So if we have like a pyramid of nutrition, right? And everyone's pyramid is, can everyone see this? Yeah. yeah. Everyone see this. Okay. So if, if my baseline is like water, right. And then my next baseline is we're talking about like nutrients, right? Like vegetables, getting everything balanced, macros, getting that all balanced. Then like up here, we're talking about intermittent fasting or maybe keto or maybe playing around with something else. Those are all tactical approaches after like janice said all of this we've worked through and sometimes we might have to spend longer times in these because of a a previous like trauma with with binge eating or behavioral stuff there's a shitload of stuff that can go on and what intermittent fasting can do is trigger those things and then i spent all this work and i just excuse my language but then fucked up and i got to go all the way back down you know what i'm saying so like out of 20 people i'm coaching right now to be honest i'm using intermittent fasting 
on one of them. And it's an adult male that loves to drink a lot of beer. And the only way I can kind of, and he loves the fast feast idea. So like you were saying, Matt, if we have, you know, and it seems like I'm going all over the place, but I swear to God, it all goes together. So if we're eating five days a week healthy and then two days off, and I keep doing that, right? At the end of the month, two, four, six, eight, eight days, I have a full week where I'm eating like total poop, right? A full week where I'm eating like garbage. And then five, you know, 20 days where I'm eating well, those numbers will never add up in the long run, right? So I've got this guy, I'm using a 24 hour approach where I can take this number and cut it in half to four because the other day of the week, he's using a fast feast type of thing. So Saturday loves to go out, drink beers. And this is after I've worked through all the approaches where then Sunday uses it almost like a cleansing day. He hydrates. He gets in a lot. I make him do like double graminos and it's consistently working for him. It doesn't mess him up. It's actually causing him to drink less over time. And we're having great results. But again, that's after 12 to 16 weeks of coaching, of laying down a foundation, then finding the right tactic that's going to fit the right personality for this person's lifestyle. And I think that's where intermittent fasting can be really great. But again, you have to be pretty educated on which approach would be beneficial to someone i definitely wouldn't use a, a fast feast approach to someone that has struggled with binge eating like janice said that's just gonna you're just gonna trigger it's not even gonna be on the table we're not even talking about it anytime you start talking about restriction again and then eating not eating that's gonna flip a switch on somebody you know what i'm saying i think for a lot of people that's becoming an issue and that fast feast they're going nuts on one day and then they're not eating and i think that's actually making the system worse instead of getting a steady baseline of nutrients over a long period of time and then throwing in intermittent fasting. Yeah, I totally agree. Janice, what do you, what do you think about this? Uh, when I hear about intermittent fasting, I consider it an approach, which I'm sure we all do. And, and I think basically in, in our nutrition coaching lifespan here, there's been three approaches, three major approaches, right, that are popular. They're crazy. Paleo, macros, intermittent fasting right they're yeah, all and i would say and yeah maybe keto, keto throwing that in there keto, but they're all keto, and yeah. I'll put keto in there and and here yeah. but, but here's the crazy thing and I, I don't know if you agree or disagree with this so i'm asking no matter people's style that they would like to come in with whether they want to eat keto whether they want to eat paleo do you find that everyone's mindset when we're talking about weight loss is restrictive in nature do you believe that we're, yeah we're like a restrictive like um, culture, and and I don't get where that comes from. Well, I get it, I get it, right? But do you find that there's a fear to, or people are using intermittent fasting to actually just eat less? I mean, honestly, I would say with all of those that you mentioned, um, well, first of all, all any any style diet is was created with the same baseline based off of eating healthy, nutritious food. Bottom line, paleo was not created to be dirty paleo where you could just eat buffalo wings and blue cheese all day because there's no, <laughs> um, you know, no carbohydrates in it. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, keto, you know, so that was, you know, based off of, you know, to do keto, it's clean eating, healthy fats. However, okay, well, if that's too restrictive for you, if we add in, okay, but you can eat dirty keto. Like people got to make their own thing. Um, but I definitely think the restrictive um, eating across the board comes also from good food versus bad food. Everybody's mentality in their head, and I know that you hear this from people, well, like I'm eating clean. Some people say they're eating clean, but like, I don't know if everybody has a definition of clean. You know what I mean? Like, I agree. Clean can be, to me, eating potatoes and rice is still me eating clean. Now, some of it's processed and eating rice, but it's like, I mean, it's so clean. I have no bread. I have no wheat. I have no gluten. I have no dairy. I have no, you know what I mean? Like, and that stuff is bad, 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 bad. Maybe it's because there is um, that trigger that if I eat bread, then I'm going to eat three pieces of bread. Then I'm going to eat pizza. Now I want butter, you know, all those type of things. But I think overall, um, 
we need to focus on all of the things that we can have, you know what I mean? Rather than the things that I'm not allowed to eat anymore, you know, because that's not a lifestyle because you can do that for six weeks. I, and, and this is what I think we all kind of agree is we don't do meal plans. Can we help people with some ideas and ingredients and what they can do for cooking to maybe get a little bit more protein and make it a little bit healthier? Yes, we can do that. We don't do meal plans. I know Matt and I don't do meal plans because I can write you a program for six weeks and tell you exactly what to eat. Well, after six weeks, you're on your own. Then you get afraid to branch out onto those other other things that your body can tolerate and that you're, you're okay with eating, but you think it's bad. You know, eventually what I find with those type of restrictive type of things, here's your meal plan, or like even the Whole30, let's do Whole30. It's a great thing. You know, um, people have benefit from it. You know, people who have um, some allergies benefit from something like that, where they can actually hone in on maybe what their bodies are sensitive to. Um, but after the 30 days, they start adding certain things on. How do they know then that they can control it. It just, oh my God, I need whole 30. I need to go back on whole 30. I need to, you know, I need to do IF again. Um, with IF and all of these, basically at the end of the day, people use it to use to, to lose weight because we are put, taking in less calories than we are burning. So conventional dieting or reducing your calories and being um, a lot, less strict or holding yourself under those restrictions can do the same thing. I mean, when we look at Berardi's study, as Matt talked about with, with um, precision nutrition, he did six months and he did six different styles of intermittent fasting for extended periods of time so that he could kind of look at that. Now, this is a very educated man who's very healthy. Um, but, you know, I found it, I found the whole thing super interesting that until he tweaked it so much to specifically work for him, Conventional dieting worked. Hey, listen, if I was, you know, in a cut and I did this conventionally for 12 weeks and just reduced my calories overall, then I would be in the same spot, you know? So it is a tool. Um, but I think restrictive nature in general is our fear. And that's, you know, maybe, they, maybe it's social media and maybe it's all the things we've heard. It's a thousand diets that pop out. Those things that hit us in our screen, be fit in 30 days, you know, follow my program. It's all that, that same type of thing and it's not really getting to the root and that baseline of that triangle no it, it, it's really not and and the other thing is when people have a restrictive mindset and i'm not just talking about if although i know the topic today is for if um for me when i'm on something so restrictive and i fail it messes with my head and guess what it does then it makes me want to do worse things to my diet because I just don't give a shit, right? You like you, you already, already messed it up, right? Yep. And 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 that's what I find with a lot of people is they have that mentality because I I mean I also had a restrictive mentality with dieting like my 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 whole entire career, and I realized how bad that is for people and and, and you know it's another reason why I'm cautious about you know um delivering for someone intermittent fasting because. I'd rather someone get adequate in calories. So if I was going to prescribe intermittent fasting, um, we better still be adequate with our calories at a healthy level. If you're going to intermittent fast, you know, because I think the, uh, the fad was to use it for weight loss, but I'm not sure that was the real underlying principle of intermittent fasting. Now, I don't know what your thoughts on that Adrian are, but um, are you keeping calories adequate? on intermittent fasting or are you doing a severe restriction um if if i was to implore it usually i just the the day is usually calorie flip calorie free so if, if it's i mean i i really just use the 24-hour fast to help mitigate the damage or prevent damage from someone that's okay with that mm -hmm. okay um overall like i said it's literally out of out of one in 100 people do i use it yeah. It's, it's pretty rare. Uh, yeah, but if, if I were to use something like a 16-8 with someone, um, or did I say that right, 16-8, I would make sure calories were sufficient. I just think over the overarching theme is that all of these are just strategies to put someone in a caloric deficit. It's yeah. just repackaged and rebranded 
in some sort of uh, blueprint that somebody can follow. So it's, it's going to work for certain people that that blueprint works. But overall, all these diets are designed to put you in a caloric deficit. It's just the way that they go about it. You know, if we're doing carb cycling, probably going to put you in a deficit. Intermittent fasting, you're eating less overall, deficit. Keto, you know, if you do it, like Janice said, if you're sitting there eating wings and, and, you know, blue cheese, I don't know how much of a deficit, but then again, it's so fat, your stomach gets full. You really can't eat that much more caloric deficit. Exactly. You see what I'm saying? So like all these things are just packaged to someone, but the big, the big picture that it keeps missing is how health is done, which is through education, facilitation and inflammation. And that's why people hire us. Oh, We're yeah. educating them on the principles behind these things. And that's why, you know, hiring a coach, it works and it sticks because all of these things work, but under the umbrella of education, right. education of, you know, hydration, macros, they matter, micronutrients, mm -hmm. gut health, you know, how to properly, you know, how to make a behavior change of choosing or swapping certain food items. And a lot of people are just from an unconscious to conscious state. Like a lot of my, a lot of my clients don't know Ezekiel bread exists and we don't slap their hand. They just don't know. So there's an education issue. Then there's the facilitation where I think most people have issues with is facilitating them to actually do the change. And then last but not least is consistency of implementation of making sure that that stays at a pace that they continue to, to have a result. Right. But I think, like you said, the big picture of all of these things where people keep going back and forth and doing whole 30 and all this shit is the education phase customary to them is never done. Mm -hmm. So like, like Janice was saying, until Berardi had to tweak it over and over and over again. And since he's coached himself, he customized a tactical approach to caloric deficit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So overall, it's like the, the educational piece of nutrition. And this is why I think most people struggle. We are not taught nutrition ever at any point. Mm -hmm. We're truly not taught it. We have to figure it out as we go. We're all these other things that are minutia in life. We get taught early on, but when it comes to health, we don't get taught and health is completely changed with the landscape of how we live now, mm -hmm. but health principles are not taught to us in a way that's educated correctly but then nobody teaches us facilitation or implementation either. That's stuff that we have to find out on our own. And it's very struggling when you're trying to make this puzzle piece fit, fit this part of your body and it just doesn't work. Oh yeah. Or that puzzle piece doesn't fit in with your lifestyle. But what if you work overnight shifts and you're a nurse? Mm -hmm. Intermittent fasting, is I don't know if that's going to work. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, it really comes down to that, that same overarching theme of education, facilitation, implementation of all of these different types of diets. You know, and that's why having people like us works because we can take all this information, filter it through and streamline and be like, okay, this is probably going to be the, the best approach for you. Totally. And unfortunately, you know, intermittent fasting got some big hype early. And believe me, I did it. I did it accidentally for 10 years of my training career because you, you and Janice, I mean, if you guys were PTs early, I opened up a gym at four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning. I wasn't eating from four to 12 anyway. I was just drinking water and coffee. Mm -hmm. And in my super unhealthy, I was pounding Red Bulls. I was just liquids till 12 every day. So like I was by accidently intermittent fasting, but that wasn't healthy for me. And I felt like garbage, you know? So like, I think for everybody, it's going to come down to a, a thing of, can you make it work for them? And if it fits great, stick to it and ride it out. Yeah, totally. I couldn't agree more. Um, just for everyone that's typing in the chat, I will get to those when, um, uh, as soon as I bring our last uh, kind of question up. So we will get to those. You can ask questions in the chat. So I will leave a couple minutes for that. But I do want to talk about one more thing specific to our population. With my basic knowledge of energy systems and fuel substrates that you need, for me, intermittent, if, if, if you only care about looking good and nothing else, intermittent fasting might work in CrossFit. And if it's programmed correctly, if you care about your performance and looking good, I don't think you should be doing intermittent fasting. And that's my general feeling about it. Um, and how I felt personally, what I've seen out there from working with people, what I've seen people experiment with. So I think if you have anything in your goals and it all comes down to what are your goals, if you care about performance, I don't think intermittent fasting is for you. No. And, and, I'll go to, no. and I'll go to Janice first to see like what she thinks about that. And 
you know, anything that's left over, we'll have Adrian touch on, and then we'll open it up. Um, I, I couldn't agree more with you on that. Um, the studies and everything that I've read and researched on intermittent fasting, um, first of all, a lot of the studies were done on men. I was going to put that out there. There's not a lot of studies where there's been um, major success with women in intermittent fasting, um, just because of how hormonally sensitive women are. Um, when your body senses starvation, it can really mess with, with hormones. So I would say, yes, if you are someone who's doing CrossFit a couple days a week, and you just want to look good, you don't care about um, maintaining lean muscle mass, um, building that skeletal muscle, and you just want to see some body, body fat loss, maybe, maybe go with intermittent fasting. Um, I would say for those of us who want to not only look good, we want to um, perform well, as Matt said. Rich Fronig, unbelievably, um, actually does intermittent fasting. Now, Rich Fronig, we know how fit he is. He just started it, I think, about a year ago. He's probably the only um, athlete when we hear or that's talked about it that does it. He also does like the RP diet. Um, so he's he's a different specimen, but I would say for for if you're looking to maintain your skeletal muscle or build lean, lean muscle mass and bring that body fat down both um, and have strength to be able to form, perform at high intensities, I would agree with Matt that not the best choice to go um, with intermittent fasting. And if you do do intermittent fasting, I would make sure that you get checked in, um, get your blood work done, get your, you know, if you notice that hormonally things are not right, if you're losing your period and things like that, um, they are not good, good signs that whatever you're doing is working. Yeah, and I mean, and honestly, if, if people aren't sure, then we should probably get together on some coaching and see how, how yeah. it can help you because most people need guides through this process. Not, the processes seem simple, but they're definitely not. And I mean, we talked about it. We need, we need coaches, yeah, you know? Exactly. I know everything. And even Berardi said, he's like, I'm a coach. I should know better, but I'm going to do this anyway. And then through his study, he said, this is what I'm going to tell people. I would tell my clients not to do. He spent eight weeks doing something he knew his body was telling him he shouldn't do before he switched it up. Yeah. You know, so even coaches need coaches, even though you, you have okay. the knowledge, it's, you know. Totally. Now, just on that last topic, before we go over some stuff that's, um, that is in the chat um, for me. Um, Adrian, do you have anything to add with that? I know you work with some CrossFit athletes. Is, yeah. thing, or is this something they came in doing and you're like, hey, we got to cut that out or? Actually, yeah. Like most of them came in with uh, major metabolic issues. Like doing their blood work, they look healthy. And it was like, holy shit, like a lot of them were losing a lot of hair, like sex drive was going down. I work with both genders and I was like, oh my gosh. So I almost spent six months doing like a reverse taper, getting calories up, like just taking their training. I had to like call their coaches and be like, we're taking training volume down. Like if you really want to get to the next level, I need to shut them down for like six, not shut them down. We can't tell an athlete that, but just pull back the reins. Yeah. Um, because it was so deleterious with um, adrenal fatigue and metabolic syndrome. I don't think that's, a, that's just a term. I think it's a fake term. A lot of people throw around just that hormonally are not functioning correctly. Uh, so they were, they were doing these insane risk, like five hour eating windows training twice a day. Sometimes it's high work and then low, like high skill work. So at that, at the competitive level, even if you're just competing in general, like, no, I mean, I just would draw, I mean, I rarely say a hard no on things, but from what I've seen blood work in the past five years of athletes and Rich Froning is an anomaly. If you gave that guy chicken wings for a year, I think he'd still be Jack and do great. He's just, <laughs> he guy's a genetic freak. <laughs> I mean, so in general, um, I totally agree that the general person that's just coming in to train and wants to just look good, sure could work, but for performance benefits, I mean, true continuous performance without injury, I think it should be left off the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Um, I did want to leave a couple minutes. So it, we have, you know, roughly about uh, 15 minutes left here. And I Perfect. did want to open it up for some questions at, at this time. So I have one in the chat. And um, 
This one is, um, are there any proven clinical benefits to IF? Um, we briefly touched on this. I'll, I'll repeat what I said, and then Adrian can, can share anything that, that she would have otherwise. Um, and, then, and then Janice can also share. But um, the only thing health-wise that I came across is some neurogenesis. So, genesis, so your, your, your brain cells actually will regenerate, right? I saw some different cells in the body um, regenerate going through that autofactosis, right? But the people that these were done on were males. And I believe the one study I said was a military study. And they were doing one specific protocol. So do we actually know if there's clinical health benefits to intermittent fasting in this environment using a more common approach of like 16-8, which I think would be the most common approach? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if there's any clinical benefits because I haven't seen anyone tracking their blood work that I work with. So I don't know. There's proposed benefits, but they're from a completely different protocol and people that don't take part in high intense activity and people that daily lives were controlled all day because they were in the military. So other than that, that's the best answer I can give for that, Adrian. I don't know if you have anything to add yeah. to that. No, I mean, there's a lot of stuff with like Peter Atia and like uh, Dr. Longo and stuff where they've done more um, fasting. Like I said, they're older people and, and endure older people in endurance sports. Yes. Clinical research has proven what you've said and, and so some increases in ampk uh kinase a little bit um but again for the for young and i'm talking i'm putting young as like 55 and under so sorry anybody that's uh, might be uh, but that's what research we're looking at not really that i would support using it um that's it yeah anything from you janice i did mute you so you're gonna have to unmute yourself there was feedback coming from your uh computer Sorry, go ahead. You got to unmute. I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. okay. Um, it's, a good, it's getting loud in my house. My kids just finished school, so I apologize. Um, no, I, there's not much to add on there. Just the most of the research that's been done has been done on animals. So um, if you look at rats and the, the, what they've discovered from that, they are seeing that all those benefits that you talked about. Um, but... Other than that, there really hasn't been much research. Everything you look at, it's all speculation that, that there has been studies that have shown. Um, so when you, if you go on the internet and you Google it and you say, is intermittent fasting going to be beneficial? What you will see most likely is somebody stating there has been studies that have been done. But then if you go and like, follow that down and continue your research, you're not going to find many studies that were done. Yeah, big circle. Like you said. <laughs> It is. Yeah. Um, I got another good question here, but this is probably on the table for us to decide on next week's topic because um, I have a question that, um, that talks, can we elaborate on um, the hormonal aspect, especially for women in dieting? I think yes. that deserves the whole talk. I don't know if you agree. Um, that probably yeah, I, deserves the whole talk. Yeah. Um, as far I agree. As it's a nutrition and females, I, I think that deserves a whole um, 45 minutes from us. Mm -hmm. um, so Suzanne, I'm so sorry. We're not going to answer your question today. We're going to devote a whole talk to it. All right. Just because I think that can get a little uh, wordy and uh, we might go on for w way, way past here. Um, so uh, am I allowed to, uh, to add these? I guess I can read these out loud since they're in the chat and it's to everyone. But uh, Nicole G had added, um, Intermittent fasting worked great for me to lose some body fat in the beginning of my fitness journey, but it isn't sustainable for me in any longer, and I found it hard to break the habit of fasting and eating before 12 p.m. It might be a good thing to play around with for a six-day week period, but don't get stuck in the habit of not eating like me. And, and, and like, that's just saying, like, in the, right, in, in the right place, you can apply it. And when you can't, you can't. You know, like when it, when like you know, Berardi kept on changing his protocol because he would plateau, or it would go too much in the negative, uh, the negative way. Like he kept on changing because like that sucked. I lost ten pounds in two weeks and I suffered. Let me change it, right? And then the next one was he wasn't getting any strength gains. Okay, let me change it. Like so, he kept on changing it until he found what his happy medium was. And I believe where he ended up was sixteen and eight with one twenty-four hour day. Um, yeah. I could be wrong, but I believe that's the protocol he decided to stay on 
16 fast, eight hours of eating, and then one day a week, typically on a Sunday, he would fast the entire day. So he would go 20. Yeah, hours. so that he could keep his calories up and gain, continue the lean muscle mass. Yeah. Um, but he was gaining by doing the lean, the lean, uh, the lean gain. On, well, the, here is he said he gained skeletal muscle mass. So he could have absolute weight, but gained muscle mass. He was probably, knowing him, he was probably using it in body or some higher means of actually assessing his body comp which uh which we have so all our nutrition yeah. clients get to go on the in-body scan and kind of see specifically what, what that is and we do a scan at the beginning and at the end and that's a really cool number because you really start to see the dial move in other things that you can't pay attention to when you're just using a scale which is really, really cool, you know um for, and, uh, i would uh, just like to say too with intermittent fasting and and like we i know we're going to do the woman conversation yeah but if someone's looking at doing the 16 8 or if they think that it's something they want to do you don't need to do jump in you know with both feet for 16 8 and say for seven days a week i'm going to do this um you know maybe maybe try 12 and 12 as just a a really good practice of have 12 you know hours window that you're eating in a 12 hour window that you're not um, and then slowly move that to maybe 14 hour, you know, and, and can do that way. Maybe a couple days a week if someone really wanted to try it. But like you said, really, um, none of us would recommend it unless you really are kind of either being coached, um, or watched over, or if you really do have, um, some of those amazing baseline nutrition, uh, skills, overall skills. Janice, how about we do 24 hours and I check in with you every two hours and see how our conversation goes, gets worse and worse. Over there, yeah. Hours. They see the brain fog. There the is no, day. there is no way I could go 24 hours. I mean, really I could. <laughs> There's maybe. actually no way you could talk to me every two hours. <laughs> you have a better chance. No, than Matt, I, I feel like we're on that schedule now. <laughs> we are. I've calmed down <laughs> with my amount of calls to you. Um, <laughs> I've definitely calmed down. Um, all right. Any last, I mean, we have questions in here that we're definitely going to, uh, um, oh, I got, oh, I got, I got some good comments. Uh, I have gave me the permission to feel okay about skipping breakfast and which my weight loss journey was frowned upon. Um, they would say you can't skip breakfast to lose weight. You have to eat six plus times a day, which in my journey did not work for me. Yeah. I mean, and, and John Berardi talks about this as far as eating every three hours and that science still works, right? It does, but there's also other applications. You know, like a, a number, I'm not so stuck on a number of times I'm eating other than spacing out. Like for me to eat 3,200 calories, I, I have to space it out. So if I was only eating 25, I could probably do that easily two meals, maybe even one at a time. But I, it, it depends how many meals that you want to eat a day. But again, you have to find the application that works for your lifestyle, that works for your specific goals. And, and I think that's the whole point of this whole thing is, we're not, we don't hate intermittent fasting. We just like to use it in its right application. And we're, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to end up talking about all of them. I mean, we'll mm -hmm. talk about paleo. We'll talk about keto. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about macros because I think it all needs to be addressed. But as far as nutrition and women thing, uh, we need to talk about that. Yeah, we do. I would, Nicole, and what you, this call was females. Yeah. Nicole, and what you're saying, this kind of brought up a, a big thing for me is like the question of whether you can say, is breakfast the most important meal of the day, right? Um, you hear people say that and you, it can be a yes and it can be a no. When we think of breakfast in that traditional sense that breakfast has to be at 7 a.m., that's not everybody's, you know, schedule. However, breaking the fast, that's breakfast. It means breaking the fast of not eating. So that first meal that you put in your body should be a very nutritious meal. It should be, it may be the most important meal of the day, should be the most important meal of the day. That sets you up for your whole day. You know, that gives you the energy to get through that day. So when you think about what that actual word is, breaking a fast, I mean, maybe you're not eating till noon, but if you're putting nutritious things in your body and able, and that works for you, you know, if you're, if you're not eating till noon and then you're eating like Snickers bars and, you know, candy, then probably not a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, so we're going to wrap things up here and I just want to let everyone know that was on the call today. Um, 
Thank you so much for coming out. I, I know a lot of people probably have questions they didn't want to ask yet. So just to know, I think we're in agreement that Adrian, Janice, we're going to talk about uh, nutrition and females. So we could talk about how we want to approach that. But if you guys that are on here want to start asking some questions, just start thinking about those. We can even poll on Instagram. Um, leading yeah, maybe we'll do that. So we could get some questions if we have them. So we know how to structure the whole conversation. All right. So we'll, we'll do that for you guys, but thank you so much for coming out and listening. I hope you found this informative. If you need to get in contact with any of us, all right. Um, then please, um, you know how to get in contact with, uh, Janice and I, but, um, Adrian, um, you can hit her up on Instagram at Amoline, A-M-O-L-E-A-N. Okay. There's a um, one on there. Go ahead. What's that? It's Amoline one. Oh, Ameline one. You put a one on the end. I think somebody. I think somebody else is an oh. Ameline. So I was like, oh, son of a bitch. Okay. I had to put a one on there. You know, it's funny. I never see that because when I tag you a hundred times a week, only the first yeah. letters come out, and I just assume that's what it is. <laughs> it's like right I'm there. As soon as I start typing. And I'm rebranding too, and I'm like, should I even change my Instagram handle? Probably not. I know, oh, right? Yeah, it's scary. Adrian, you're not gonna believe. I looked up your. I was trying to find pictures of you. So on yeah. your Facebook, your Ameline Health. Oh my God, yeah. you were like a baby in those pictures. I know. I was a child. I was. I was a child. I was a child. I I got out of Facebook because it just wasn't. I don't know. wasn't a space I wanted to be in anymore. So I I jumped right. out. I don't even do anything with that. I was just gonna close it all down. But yeah, I, I look like you have a good information baby. on there though. I was like, oh my God, she's a baby. Yeah, I was a little, I was a little, little one there. I was probably it's like ten years old. So and now, like, yeah, I gotta shut and now she down. has Laura. Um, convinced that Laura's ordering uh, glasses, the blue light glasses. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I will saturate her mind. With my, that Amazon, shit. my Amazon bill is crazy, and you're adding I blame it on it. You're adding Dude, it was twelve that. bucks. The glasses were twelve dollars, man. They're easy. They're cheap, um, man. I'm I'm getting them too. We 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 could talk about um blue light exposure sometime too. That's like a whole. Oh, other that's topic. a that's a rabbit hole. I don't know many. Yeah, anybody and, and asked actually, me about that. Janice is here. We'll just be sitting here asking questions because um, yeah, I'm we'll going to look into that stuff. So I'm very, uh, you know, um, I'm probably unaware of most of the stuff that's out there for it. But um, I know it's important. So, you know, we'll definitely cover that also. But um, all right. So, guys, um, we're going to sign off. All right. Um, this is being recorded. So if you want to re-listen to it or share it with your friends and family, go ahead and do that. We're going to put it up on YouTube and we'll get it, uh, we'll get it linked and sent out to you guys. All right. Word. All right. See you guys. Nice talk. Right, thank you. All right, take care.